Are you like me? Are you thinking, finally, some of these large legion companies that sell leads are getting called out and exposed for selling fake leads? Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking this for a while. Like, there's no way that the leads that they're sending are actually these really hot leads ready to buy and sell right now. Back in 2021, actually, it was reported that real estate agents bought 200 million leads. Okay, how can 200 million people be ready to buy and sell when the lead was sent? It's impossible. When I heard that number, I thought fraudulent, fraudulent, fraudulent. There's no way. And I went back and there was 280 million adults at that time in the U.S. So they literally sold you just about every single adult's contact information in the country. And it just makes you wonder. There's there's no way. So I, I felt like something like this was coming down the pipe. And I'm going to read to you in this video what they're actually accusing Realtor.com and these are the companies of doing, and it's absolutely scandalous. And after that, I'm going to share with you my new prospecting strategy. I call it situational prospecting, and it's a three-step process. I'm going to share those three steps with you at the end of this video. And before I get into this, I just want to take a minute to, to appreciate the resilience of real estate agents through everything going on. You've got massive rule changes. I mean, this is industry. This is life-changing rules. This is pulling apart the fabric of how we've done business for 40 years. And by the way, that fabric was put in place out of necessity of buyers being unrepresented. We're kind of going backwards. Nevertheless, we are where we are, and we're facing these massive changes. We're facing a year that's slower than 2008 when it comes to the number of transactions. And guess what? I see real estate agents out there crushing it regardless, right? I see agents stepping up to the plate and they're saying, you know what? I've gotten uh, buyers to sign agreements left and right. This ain't no problem. I'm trucking right along. Actually, I'm seeing agents say, this is helping me because buyers that don't sign, I'm not working with them. And it's saving me time on people that aren't serious. Right. And, and 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 they're 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 becoming better negotiators as well. This is this is increasing their skill level when it comes to articulating their value and what we do as an industry. So I just want to take a second to give kudos to and and recognize the resilience and grace that real estate agents are showing right now. It's absolutely amazing to see this firsthand. And also, I want you guys to use my platform to build your own communities and to network with each other and collaborate with each other, right? We need to come together as a team, as we are supporting each other, holding each other up, raising each other up. So if you want to comment below, uh, let us know who you are, what market you're in and comment back and forth and scroll through the comments and look for agents in your market. Look for agents that, that like similar things than you and connect with each other because the connections and your network is what's going to be your net worth. That's what's going to take you to the next level or the people that you're connected to. So use my platform to connect with each other and let's continue to grow together. And also comment below if you would like 80% of your business to be listings. How many of you would like an 80-20 listing to buyer ratio? Because that's what my career, my entire career was an 80-20 ratio. You know, 80% of my business was listings. And I never turned a buyer down, ever. But the way that I built my business, it, it, it literally manifested an 80-20 listing to buyer ratio. And the principles that I built the business on is exactly what I teach in my Set More Listing Appointments Challenge. I teach you exactly the entire process. If you like what you're hearing on YouTube, you're going to love the what I teach in the challenge. So the next one is starting soon. You can go to setmorelistingappointments.com. There's already hundreds of agents registered for the next one. So get in there. It's time to take this business serious and learn something new so that you can do something new and have something new. Now, let's dive into this article because this, this is very interesting. OK, because what they're accusing uh, Realtor.com of doing is like, really, <laughs> you guys are actually doing that? That is that is. Oh, man, that's the worst. Realtors file suit um, against Move NAR 
uh, over fake lease schemes. So you see NAR, the National Association of Realtors, here they go again. And they are another lawsuit here. And you got eight realtors seeking the class action uh, status in their lawsuit against Realtor.com for allegedly selling unvetted and fraudulent buyer and seller leads. Oh, man. These agents are from all over the place. They're from California, Nevada, Washington, Florida, Georgia, New York State. Um, they filed uh, the complaint against uh, the parent company of Realtor.com, Move, for alleging the sale of uh, unvetted fraudulent leads through the uh, Move network sites, including Realtor.com, List Hub, and Upnest. Okay, now, now, okay, the the, the Move parent company, News Corp, and, and real estate lead generation uh, technology platform, Obsidy, and the National Association of Realtors are also named as co-defendants for their role, right? Their role in a in the alleged scheme to sell fake buyer leads. So, man. <laughs> The, the plaintiffs are seeking damages equal to the amount they spent on Realtor.com leads alongside any punitive and exemplary damages approved by the court. OK. Um, and this is interesting. The defendant's unlawful conduct alleged herein is so widespread that it has caused harm to the goodwill of each prospective class member and the, and, and the residential real estate agency uh, uh, business as a whole. Court documents read defendants have previously been sued for nearly identical conduct and resolve such lawsuits, but yet continue to operate the scheme uh, and the fraudulent and unlawful business practices alleged herein. It's crazy that, that you've got these massive corporations that are allegedly doing this kind of conduct. I'm fixing to tell you exactly what they're accused of, and it's like, wait a minute. And when you start to really think about this, you start to think about how much they charge per lead. And a lot of these companies, like I know Opsity, Zillow even, they charge a percentage of the commission. Like it's massive what they charge for these leads, crazy amounts. And so you have to think, okay, do I want my business, the foundation of my business and my entire business model to be dependent on these companies giving me leads? Or would I want the foundation and business model of my business to be on myself generating these leads on my own for a way cheaper price for a much higher quality lead, right? That's what situational prospecting is. I'll get to that in just a second. But when you're dependent on one of these companies or any third party giving you leads, yeah, when you get them, you got to work them and that's a lot of work, but but the act of actually getting the lead, right? Getting the lead. If you're dependent on somebody for that, other than yourself, you are susceptible to market swings, to rule changes, right? If something happened in buyer commission, you know, got cut in half, let's say, and you're dependent on these companies selling you really expensive buyer leads, where's your business then, right? Or if the market retracts like it's done, and interest rates go up like it's done and number of transactions drop and then most of your business was dependent on the flow of your at that point you're dependent on the market right and instead of being dependent on the market to for your lead flow uh, be dependent on yourself to create leads out of thin air how many leads you want the quality of leads you want and how much you want to pay per lead that's the difference in when you're buying these leads for an expensive price, you have no control over who the leads are, how many leads you're going to get, or how much they're going to be, versus when you create your own leads, you get the contact information for less than two cents, and you create something there that's way better than these really expensive leads that you're getting. And guess what? When you buy the lead, you still got to call them. When you when you when you subject to uh, situational prospecting or for sale bounders or expireds um, for your cold traffic, yeah, hit your warm traffic, hit the people you know, hit your database, right? I'm talking about finding new people that have never heard about you, right? That part of your business has to grow to get to the next level. You're not going to grow just focusing on your database. That's just going to maintain your income. If you want to take your income to the next level, then you have to increase your database size, which means you've got to reach new people. Now, how are we going to do that? At what rate are we going to do that? At what quality are we going to do that? These are things you need to think about when you're building your business. Now, the lawsuit claims move 
scrapes data from owned, controlled, operated, and affiliated websites, web properties, digital, and social media sites. So that so they basically move, which is the parent company of Realtor.com. They're saying that they scrape data. The lawsuit claims they scrape data from owned, controlled, operated, affiliated websites, web properties, digital, and social media. They're scraping data from social media to gather information about users who are searching for common real estate terms, common real estate terms, not, 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 not specific, but common real estate terms like real estate. So like if you search real estate, then they're going to count that as a lead because you search real estate, right? If you search property, if you search house, if you search mortgage, then you're counting that as a lead. You're going to sell me for an expensive price. No, what you're doing is you're just throwing as many leads as you can against the wall, hoping something sticks so you can take 30, 40%. That's what that is. Right. And so they're, they're, they're looking for users who are searching for common real estate terms or seem to be in the market for a, a, a other large non real estate um, purchases such as vehicles. So if you're buying a car, so if somebody's buying a car, all right, and I buy leads from realtor.com, realtor.com, you're going to send me that, that person that's buying a car and say it's a lead just because they're buying a car? No, 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 you ain't. And, and this is one reason I got Zillow leads the moment Zillow announced that they were selling leads back in 2014, I want to say 13, 14, whenever that was, might've been 12. I can't remember exactly what, what the year was, but I bought it. I spent 20 grand that year on Trulia and Zillow leads. And, uh, I mean, I, we, we sold a couple properties, but I was like, why am I spending 20 grand here? Like I get people's information. I get better leads from just calling the exact property owners that I want that, that, that own the type of property I want to sell. And so we did 20 grand, me and my father that year, we shut it down. Um, fast forward into today, my father got a call from Zillow and he bought six months worth, I think, or something like that from Zillow. And they were horrible leads. Like they were trying to rent. They weren't interested. Like it was really, really bad leads. And this was literally a year ago. And the salesperson at Zillow was like, was like, oh, because because my father was like, back in the day, we tried it and it wasn't any good. And and he was like, the salesman was like, oh, we're that was a long time ago. We vet them now. We these are amazing leads. Like, you're gonna be happy with this. So he's like, All right, he signed up for six months and he canceled as soon as his contract was up because all the leads were horrible. Like it, it was it was wild. Um, and I'm like, dad called me and was like, Should we do this? I'm like, Yeah, like why not? Give it a test. Let's see if they are better. Let's see if it is profitable. Let's see what it do, right? And what did it do? It didn't do nothing, <laughs> didn't do nothing. Now, I know there's people that crush it on Zillow. Um, you know, they, they, they make money, they swear by it. I'm all about it. Like anything that works for you in your market, like go crush it. I'm, I'm not, I'm never going to talk bad about any specific, uh, strategy because every single thing works. You can make, I can make a million bucks off Zillow leads, right? I can make a million bucks off of Instagram. I can make a million bucks off of any legion activity you want to throw at me. I will take it and I will create a million dollar business because I understand the principles. I know how the game works. I can make it happen. But nevertheless, um, my father got these leads. They were just as bad or worse than they actually, I think they were worse than they were back in the day. Probably the same, probably the same. Anyway, neither here nor there. Um, they were scraping the data and it wasn't even like real, um, you know, people that are like looking to buy a house. These users are then presented as fully vetted high intent leads on realtor.com suite of buyer and seller lead generation solutions, including connects plus ready connect concierge, formerly Obsidy, market VIP and list hub beyond the alleged selling of no intent leads. Uh, the suit also claims, get this, some leads cannot be verified as an actual living human being, right? And like, so for them to put this in there in the suit, actual living human being, that means that they did some kind of research to see if they could locate these people you know, outside of like maybe seeing them on a milk carton that they're missing you know, or something. These were not actual living human beings that they could find. Now that that now that is disgusting if that is true because they're not only just taking people who 
search certain items that they may not be interested in real estate. So these companies send it to the agent, hoping they buy something and they can make a commission. Right. But then to set, but then to send like imaginary people, how does that even work? So, I mean, what, what would be the purpose of the Legion company? Cause you're not going to make money if this person doesn't buy anything. And I know that, that some of these companies are still charging a fee per lead. Right. And so maybe it's just the volume of leads like, yeah, we sent you some leads. You know, well, I couldn't find them on people.com. <laughs> like, they don't exist. We couldn't find their birth certificate. Um, the lawsuit alleges 40 to 50 percent of realtor.com leads have no intent to purchase real estate or cannot be verified as an actual person. Furthermore, they said realtor.com sells the same group of leads, a minimum of 36 to 40 per month to multiple agents, breaking a promise of lead exclusivity. So that brings up the big question that this wouldn't be in there if they didn't know that this was a fact, if they didn't have agents that could show, Hey, I got this lead. This other agent said, Hey, I got the same lead. Hey, this other agent said, I have the same lead, right? They're, they're, they're like, like that has to be something that's provable. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, unless they're just lying and they have no proof, they just think that realtor.com is sending a lease to a bunch of different agents. Like I would think, that there's something in the discovery that that shows that several agents got the same leads. That's horrible. That's horrible. Defendants further misled, defrauded, and intentionally deceived each of the plaintiffs and each potential member of the class by representing that by paying subscription fees, enhanced subscription fees, and other payments, each such real estate agent it was obtaining specific benefits which had a high likelihood to generate business and clients for each such real estate agent. So they were selling them like subscription fees and, you know, enhanced subscription fees and charging them, you know, more money saying that the more you pay, uh, the higher chances, uh, the higher likelihood that you, you're going to have to do some business. The plaintiff said they notified Realtor.com about the issues with low quality leads and requested refunds. However, Realtor.com's sales team either denied refund requests, offered credits that could be used to purchase more leads, or suggested agents purchase higher tier subscriptions to get better quality leads. Like, wow. Okay, so no, you can't have a refund on those bad leads, but we'll give you credits so you can get some more bad leads. <laughs> and if you don't like that, you know what? Won't you just give us some more money and we'll give you some better leads, right? If you don't like the first leads, wait till you see what we got next. <laughs> you just pay a little bit of money. The higher you pay, the better quality it is. It's like, wait a minute. I mean, <laughs> can we get some quality first? Can you can you have a proof of concept on me here? Each such plaintiff complained about the fake leads and sought refunds and or partial refunds from the defendants. However, the defendants uh, then would engage in an um, uh, a program in which included showing or, or reciting the fraudulent terms to each. So they so they went and rec they went and re recited like the terms, the small print, basically saying that they're not entitled to such relief. In each situation, defendants failed and refused to refund the monies paid by the uh, plaintiffs uh, or to offer any reasonable make good uh, offer. The suit claims senior executives, managing agents, uh, managers, directors, officers at News Corp, Move, Realtor.com, and NAR knew of agents growing complaints about the quality, the lead quality, and willfully and consciously ignored the alleged sale of unvetted and fraudulent buyer and seller leads. So they're saying NAR, Realtor.com, Move, they all knew what was going on, and they ignored it. Why would they ignore it? The plaintiff specifically called out NAR for allegedly aiding and abetting as they trusted Realtor.com's products and services due to its connection with the association. NAR is and at, and at all times was independently and intimately aware of the scheme and uh, and 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 everything that was going on through NAR's relationship uh, with the with and reliance upon the other defendants to build its membership rank. So they're saying NAR's role in this was to ignore the scheme, um, you know, just to keep membership ranks going. I guess is what they're trying to say. NAR allows and contributes to its affiliation with its co-defendants to act as a broad endorsement of the conduct alleged herein and the co-defendants fraudulent scheme itself so that the plaintiffs and each member of the prospective class trusted and relied upon NAR's affiliation uh, with the other defendants and, and based at least in part on that relationship chose to do business with the other defendants. NAR actively and passively uh, induced each of the plaintiffs and each of its members to do business with the defendants. 
when asked about the suit and our spokesperson said um, that they do not own or operate move and will address these false allegations in court. A realtor.com spokesperson told him in late Monday that the company does doesn't intend on to comment on pending litigation and will vigorously defend ourselves against all claims contained in the lawsuit. This isn't the first time realtor.com has been sued over its lead gen business. In 2018, two real estate agents and a former move sales representative filed separate suits in the Los Angeles court uh, with claims that move realtor.com willfully misrepresented the quality of leads they sold to agents. So this has happened before in 2018. Uh, in one suit, um, two agents paid a couple hundred bucks a month for leads. Um, they said the leads were useless as they included the wrong contact information or weren't interested in purchasing a home. The move sales representative um, filed a suit that he was wrongfully terminated for refusing to defraud agents, defraud agents by charging them for services they never ordered or received or charging their credit cards without authorization. So it sounds like there's always been a lot of stuff going on in this department. Just goes to show you, you can't trust it, man. And, and, and like, even if the leads were, I guess, like if the leads were solid as can be, then maybe it would be worth it. I still don't see that myself just because of how expensive they are. I guess like if you just don't want to prospect and each lead they sent you was like a 50, 50 shot, if, if it was like a 50% conversion, it's like, okay, yeah, but you're still paying out so much. You can only do so many deals at a time. I would rather fill all fill my entire cup up with deals that I'm keeping as much money as possible instead of giving 30, 40% away on every deal. But that's just me. And I'm willing to do what I need to do to create leads out of thin air, which brings me to my last point here, situational prospecting. And this is something I've been playing around with for a good while. So I created like a three-step process here for you to try to make it as simple as possible to understand what I'm doing. And so basically what situational prospecting is, is you take a situation, right? It, it, you take a situation, you find the owners uh, that you want to target for this situation, and then you make the offers. So step one is create a situation and you can create a situation out of anything. It could be your listing. It could be another listing. It could be an off-market property. It could be a for sale by owner. It could even be, it could be something that that isn't even a listing. It could be a buyer. Like you have a buyer for a property. That's a situation. You you have a rent. Like anything can be a situation. One thing I've been playing around with a lot is um, trade up sellers trading into something that that's nicer than what they have. I've also been playing around with assumable.io, going to assumable.io and finding those assumable mortgages that people can get for, you know, two, three, four, five percent right now, and then target the people who have smaller homes or older homes than that house, and then calling and letting them know, hey, you could get into this house, you could upgrade and keep the mortgage rate you got right now. I can I can get you into this assumable mortgage, get your dream home and and not have a higher mortgage rate. Um, so, so those are situations. So the first thing you got to do is create a situation that you're excited about, right? That's the thing. When you create a situation that you're excited about, that comes through on the phone. People are going to hear your enthusiasm there. It's going to, it's going to be contagious. They're going to, they're going to enjoy talking to you more because you're excited about what you're talking about. Okay. So, so that's the first thing is create a situation, right? The second part is is collect data of the owners that you want to target about the situation. So we're going to collect all the data. So let's say we have a a really nice four bedroom, right? Let's say you can assume the loan at uh, four and a half percent, okay? And you want to call all the three bedrooms. You want to contact. You're not just going to call them. You're going to contact all the three bedrooms around the the four bedroom that you can pick up for four and a half percent rate. OK, so so you you get red X, you get red X and you you draw a boundary or you pick the subdivision or whatever you want to do. If you don't have red X, save one hundred and fifty dollars right now. Go to red dot com backslash Ricky, save the one hundred and fifty dollar setup fee and get geo leads plus, And you can literally find any property owner that you want. Cell phone, email, etc. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that bigger property and, you know, that's the situation. Then you're going to. You're going to collect the data of the people that you want to target about it and say, hey, 
I see you got a three bedroom. Do you need a four bedroom? I got a really nice one right down the road. I'd love to show you and I can get you in there for four and a half percent interest rate if you're interested. And so what we want to do is step one, create the situation. Step two, collect the data of the owners that you want to target with this situation. And you get these owners on Red X for less than two cents. And the cool thing about situational prospecting is you pick the situation. It can be for a $10 million home, a $5 million home, a $1 million home, a $300,000, anything you want. Beachfront condo, um, um, new construction, um, uh, whatever. You pick your clients and you're getting them for pennies. It's insane. I don't know why agents aren't doing something similar to this. And so you create the situation, you collect the data on Red X, and then step three is make the offer. What are you going to do to make an offer? You're going to call, you're going to email, you're going to text, you're going to direct mail. You're going to hit them from all angles, making the offer about the property. Now, here's what's interesting. And I made live calls yesterday. Uh, around a $10 million listing. I, I made 46 calls. I talked to six people and three, two of them wanted me to send them the information on the house. One of them wanted to sell a Gulf front condo, right? Something that had nothing to do with the deal. So this is what happens when you're out there communicating with property owners. They don't really want much. A lot of them aren't going to want anything to do with the deal that you're offering them, but because you came at them not trying to get them to sell their house. Now, all of a sudden they're like, I like this person. Let me open up and tell them like, yeah, well, I'm actually thinking about doing this. And now you've got something that has nothing to do with the deal that you called about. But now you're in a great conversation with someone who's looking to do this over here. And now we start pursuing that. Regardless, either way it goes, you've created a relationship with a property owner. And every relationship that you put in place with property owners in your market is worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career. You don't have to worry about deal. You don't have to worry about your career, like the future of your business, where deals are going to come from. You have it locked down when you build your business like this. Of course, you need the weekly email on the back end to make sure no one ever forgets who you are. I'll put a link in the description and you can look at two years of my weekly email that I've sent out and uh, a link there to use my four week template system, which makes everything extremely easy. There's also some training and stuff down there for you. But anyway, that's my situational, just the quick spill on the situational prospecting three step process, super simple. And I hope you guys got a lot out of this video.